All right, folks, welcome back here at Big Obo Media for another movie review. Today, Adversary and I teaming up. It's been a while to yeah. review the new film, Ip Man, The Awakening, mm -hmm. which is going to be available on digital Blu-ray and DVD June 21st and is available now on the High Eye app as of May 20th. So got a couple of different ways to check this film out. Um, got our copies already here in hand. Um, short, quick film. I think the biggest thing is you got to be wondering the same thing we're wondering. Another <laughs> Ip Man, like, yes, it is. And although Donnie Yen has stepped away from the character, mm -hmm. the character is still going. Um, and in this film, I'm now taking over the mantle as Ip Man, Master, um, is now C.A. Meow, uh, who does a fantastic job. And I also will add one other thing is, too, is that this film, <laughs> because if you see the last one with Donnie Yen, then you're probably like, well, where is this film at? This is another sort of prequel. <laughs> this one's <laughs> not, sort of 1930-ish a little. Um, so... Yeah, it's 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 a it's an origin story, another origin story, origin story. another yes. origin story for this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the, this kind of fits. And like I said, it's in the year about 1930 or so in Hong Kong. So, you know, at this point, just do yourself a favor, just watch them and don't try to put together the timeline. That yes. that will do you a lot more justice than to be like us and trying to figure out like, wait, where does this fit? Just to try to give yeah. you information. Forget that. Just watch the film and just say like, oh, it's another one. I don't care if it's if, if, where, where it's at. It's just another one. So, uh, but no, but you I sir, felt, go ahead. I felt the same way. I said this is very much giving me like Dragon Ball Z vibes with canon and canonical timeline and alternate timeline. It's like you got <laughs> multiverse vibes for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, yeah. So the way I broke it down is, I look at all of the Donnie Yen movies as the true timeline as what is the story they're trying to tell the other because they did like three other movies they did the first prequel with i believe the actor's name was dennis toe yeah i hope i'm saying that right then they did grandmaster which mm -hmm. i actually loved i forget the yeah. guy's name but i loved the depiction of him in that and then they did the final fight with the older dude and i thought that was actually good too you know what i mean so it was mm -hmm. like by the time I think they got the final fight is when I sat down and said, okay, maybe this was like some alternate timeline stuff. Because even if you look at the order, the way the movies were released, I think the prequel and Grandmaster came out before It Man 3. So then it was like they kind of jumped off on a tangent and then brought it back. Um, and I just chalked that up to, <clears throat> you know, Hollywood. If there's an IP that can make money, they don't give a damn. They gonna yeah. put whoever they need to put in it. <laughs> make sure that thing is on the cover. And sell the tickets. So yeah. you know what I mean, it's a viable character. The IP is popular, no pun intended. <laughs> and yeah. then um, it's um, you know people want to see it, so they're gonna they gonna make the movie. Now, what yeah. I did like piggybacking off of what you said was very much um, this actor, even though it's a prequel or like a uh, even the, yeah, because the way the Awakening, it man, the Awakening. And if you watch the movie, you know not to give too much away, but if you watch the movie toward the last, I don't know, twenty minutes, thirty minutes you understand why they went for that title. It all starts to make sense. Yeah. Um, I thought this character depicted or just did a very good job of depicting Ip Man. What we see from Donnie Yen is usually a more reserved, laid back, methodical, calculating type of dude. Mm -hmm. The first prequel, I thought Dennis Toe did a good job of exhibiting that. But the thing with me was watching him fell... I, 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 for lack of a better word, I'll I'll say we'll say soft for for lack of a better word. And what I mean by that is, he when I watched him, I didn't truly feel like I was watching it, man. It was more yeah. like okay, it's just a guy that's playing it, man. This new one, this guy that they have, I felt mm -hmm. like I was watching it, man. To me, he exuded what it man would have or could have been, like you said, at that time period. You know, coming out of high school or whatever it was. He, yeah. um, I felt just, I felt his presence was much stronger on screen. Yeah. Um, and even the martial arts, even the fighting scenes, Dennis Toe, again, did a good job. But if I'm breaking down and really looking at the martial arts, the, 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 the scenery and the execution of it, I felt that in this one, he was far more convincing. I thought the fight scenes were dope. And that's for me, like any martial arts movie, I'm watching for the fight scenes. You know, are they yeah. using wires? Are they doing it themselves? 
does the fight look natural? Does it look choreographed? A lot of times, the fights look like the person is waiting for the punch to come. It looks choreographed. Yeah. This one, I thought they did a very good job at making it feel natural. Yeah. I was watching some of the reversals and the counters and the. Ju- I'm like, yo, he wasn't posting. How the hell did he? Oh, Snake did that. So I'm on the edge mm-hmm. of my seat now because it's they they bringing it from angles I didn't anticipate. So I thought yeah. that was I thought it was brilliant. I loved his depiction of it, man. And it really, like you said, it's not a long movie to begin with, but it captured my attention. Like ten minutes, I was all the way in. Yeah, you know, all right. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be in anyway because it's it, man. But you know, you're always on the fence. Like, ah, are they gonna do it? Are they not gonna? But ten minutes, I was convinced he did the damn thing. So, yeah. I, I so so for me, here's the thing. You know, when when you look at this film, and, and it's eighty minutes, so I knew like mm-hmm. things were going to get to going quick. Yeah. Um, the biggest question is, why do we need this film? Where does this film fit? And Donnie Yen, he's gone. Who's going to fill those gigantic <laughs> shoes? shoes. Yeah. Now, I've, I've, I've already explained the first two parts here. Like, you know, just watch this film. Don't worry about where it fits in um, and, and so on. Just watch it because these films continue to be entertaining, at least. Some of them are good, good film up and down. Some of them are just entertaining. But nonetheless, I think this film checked both of those boxes. Yeah. Now, Sia, Meow, as I said, I think that the whole idea of Donnie Yen being uh, Master Ip, you, you you say, well, is he better? Did he? I think he gave this character a little bit of both here. I think mm-hmm. trying to be Donnie Yen is completely impossible. I think Donnie Yen <laughs> is one of the best on screen uh, hand to hand combat martial artist experts. His sequences are crisp, without a flaw. You see there's still more growth needed here. Nothing super noticeable. And it could be editing. It could could just be editing. Because I could imagine Donnie Yen being on set saying, hey, this is what it needs to be. He can make that call, you know? But I can see somebody like like, like Sia probably coming in and like he wants to do what he wants to do. But once it goes into post, it's out of his hands. Because there was a little bit of, especially in the third sequence where I said, the, it could have been a little more crisp, but mm-hmm. it wasn't bad. And I, when I say he's a little bit of both, I thought his styling of a hand-to-hand combat was fantastic. The choreography that he brought yes. was Sweet. unique. It was a Sweet. couple of different yeah. stylings that I should I say I have not seen. And then I also think he brings some charisma here to the character, yes. which which yes. kept me invested. And I think it's important because in this film, you see him kind of getting into Hong Kong, visiting Hong Kong. And he stop he stops a kidnap. He stops a couple of things actually. <laughs> and typically karma works like if you do something good, then good comes to you. In this case, something good sent off a chain reaction of bad things. Cause you have these um folks from uh uh these British folks here who are basically human trafficking. And because they see um uh, Master Ip intervening in one of their many operations, they say, Okay, fine target him, his folks, and kidnap them, which ends up getting one of his close friends kidnapped. His, uh, w- which sister, happens to be, yeah, his, his sister, his, sin- yeah. First, his, sin- his friend's sister, who is his friend too. You, you get yeah. the dynamic here. Um, and now, because it's a martial arts film, that now leads to a big boss battle at the end. Because what other better way to, to get your friends back but then to fight for them? And go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there, there's, there's, a, there's a political overtone to the film, but it does yeah. not interject in what's happening. Mm-hmm. You get the last two minutes of the film basically giving you the state of the land where they're saying, like, listen, human trafficking is a real thing. These things are happening. Mm-hmm. You know, folks are standing up against it. Policies are in place and whatnot and so on. And, 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 and let's call it what it is for all the, you know, the hardcore martial arts. You have Wing Chun versus the gentleman's martial arts and bar itsu which yeah i had never heard of baritsu before i guess it's a british Bar-titsu, take on yeah something yeah. like that yeah. yeah and i'm always looking for the stylistic matchups right like that's one of the reasons i think i love wing chun so much as a person that actually studied martial arts mm-hmm. for me i think it comes down to every person is their own individual and will execute based on who they are so you got yeah. some guys that will wrestle you because that's just that's them that's their nature that's how they wire they won't grab and throw you that's what they'll do you got other guys as boxers they won't square up and just shoot the fair one yeah. um then you get into the martial arts and you have so many variations i think the reason i kind of 
leaned toward Kung Fu was because I felt like the style itself fit who I was as a person. I had done yeah. karate. It was cool. I'd done Taekwondo. I think I liked that a little more than karate, but overall Taekwondo is a lot of kicks. It's mainly yeah. kicks. And in my younger days, no problem. Now you're not getting a kick above the waist. That's not the yeah. days done. Yeah. Waist or, or low. And with Wing Chun, literally that's what he does in the grandmaster movie when he came to open the school he showed the guy the guy was like how do i know you're qualified wing chun only has like three kicks and then he was like all right watch kick one boom push kick not cuz mm-hmm. cross the room mm-hmm. boom such as something spade something spade then he did the third one yeah those are three moves that was and they was giving him tea at the end it was like yo that quick it's over and he didn't do anything groundbreaking yeah. he didn't do anything over re- it's straight to the point combat and it's not necessarily, oh, I'm doing these moves to look the prettiest or look the most graceful. It's just fluid. Bah, 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 and we done. We good. And yeah. that's the thing they've said in um in previous movies. They're like, Wing Chun is a um offensive and defensive style simultaneously. So it's mm-hmm. like, yo, that's brilliant. If you can attack and block at the same time, or every block using an attack, can nobody see? Yeah. <laughs> you good. I, and, and to kind of give a little background about Bartitsu, I mean, if anybody because every 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 style has sort of a name attached to it so you when you say yeah. wing chun you think bruce lee you think Ip man and bartitsu you can say sherlock holmes and if you've seen oh, the robert downey jr version yes. of it that's what that was okay that makes yeah. sense yeah yes, so that makes you know sense. that that's the way you get a style of it and it is it, 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 you know it's a british style and and definitely is almost a night and day difference in in, in terms of just the I can almost say like the finesse of it. Yeah. One's a little bit more rugged. One's a little bit more yeah. clean and, okay. and reserved mm-hmm. and whatnot. So it's it's definitely a good match that this film built up for the big yeah. boss battle, which I'll talk about in a second. But let me, I, I want to break a little bit down on uh, uh, issues I have with the film. Uh, okay. The first thing for me, the ADR, super noticeable. And I understand that there was dubbing for this film. But also understand that this film was subtitled. So I the, the, the ADR, especially <laughs> for the Brits, was so noticeable. Like when when you got him speaking uh, uh, Cantonese, he was just like, bro, like somebody piped that one in, like <laughs> for whatever reason. Like I just, I had a problem with that. Okay. Um, I, the, the choreography and cinematography was top tier, mm-hmm. as you would expect with these type of films. That's what you're here for. That there's That's never a fall off on that. Yeah I, yeah, I rarely see these type of films, especially under this IP, that just seems to lack that. So therefore, you, you're you going to get that for sure. Um, as I said, the plot, the simple plot is you have British people selling Chinese people. Slavery, human trafficking, was that's that. And with it, man, coming in, basically identifying that there's a crisis happening, you know, they said, fine, fight us for your friends back, and they make it a good fight. But also, it's a flex here, because it's a flex to see what style of martial arts is superior here. And that's yes. what it was all about. With and, the yeah, with the way he set up the the terms of the last fight, yeah, 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 and and, and then you can you know, because this is again sort of origin stories for it, man. You start to say, well, what what significance does this have in him besides this being another fight? I think this had a little bit of a uh, um in, in terms of understanding who he becomes. The mm-hmm. biggest inner character story art for him was basically the fight between justice and righteousness which is a very it's, it's a very telling thing because are you fighting for this or are you fighting for that and again that's for you to decide between him fighting between justice and righteousness and look look I, I, it's, it's 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 a sort of a balance that i've been seeing this thing kind of occur in films more and more recent but seeing okay. the idea of saying like are you doing it because you're supposed to do it are you doing it because you want to do it? And so on. What so, are you fighting? For? And that's a question to piggyback off what you said. That's like that question has been posed in so many mm-hmm. martial arts, animes. I, I mean, you name it. It's just it's an on running theme, it seems like in Asian culture, or at least yeah. in the entertainment side of it. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately what the message I guess that they're trying to get across is what are you fighting for? Because I think yeah. as you say that, I think fearless, jet Lee. Same deal. He had to fight against four different guys from four different countries to prove that Chinese people weren't less than or weaker than yep. other guys. Same deal. So when he has that moment of clarity, kind of you can even draw parallels. He made a decision that altered the rest of his life. Mm-hmm. Here 
it man makes a decision that alters the rest of it. So yeah, same thing. That's it. And, yeah. and what and the, the moment of clarity, I guess, that comes from that. So when he had to fight um in Fearless, when he had to fight the Japanese guy at the end, the, the I think it was the swordsman, and he had the triple staff, but they were having tea before the fight. And Jet Li, t- he asked the question, and Jet Li was like, I don't believe there's a bad thing. He was like, what's the best martial arts? And he was like, I don't believe there's a best in martial arts. Yeah. I believe that there's only practitioners, just people that practice it. And yeah. so when you talk about the best, it's just a matter of how on point the guy that's doing it is. Doesn't yeah. necessarily reflect on the strength or weakness of the actual style, which I right. was, I was like, I love that. And just, I guess to add a little bit more, because I said there, there's like a political umbrella over this that they don't really mm-hmm. touch on, but yet martial arts was a political stance to an extent because this, again, yeah. wasn't about money after all. It truly was right. to prove which fighting style was more superior. And that was like not only just a flex on what you practice, but a flex for your country, country. you know, your nationality, yeah. what you stand for. And that's where this kind of got into. So. Yeah. I like the, what would you call those? I don't even know what you would call those, but just as you said that, you reminded me. Um, I think I think the movie, this movie did a very good job of presenting that two paths, which one will you take yeah. and be prepared for what comes with it. I feel like yeah. that was the main character's lesson in the movie. From yeah. the bad guy side, I thought it was brilliant how they did it. Like you said, he was like, you took the girl's, I was going to sell them for X amount of money. So this is the amount of bread that I'm out. By the time it gets to the actual fight, he realizes, yo, forget the money. This ain't, this is so much mm-hmm. bigger than money. Mm-hmm. If I can get people to publicly believe or witness that you're weaker than you can, that's you worth can, a billion dollars right now. I can yeah. You can, you can, cri- you can cripple a whole nation just yes, by this, you know, so. The, and it, it's very telling because it gives you insight onto Mm, that looks real familiar. That looks a lot like mm-hmm. stuff happening mm-hmm. today, right now. Yeah. Same deal. You know, yeah. forget the money. We'll do yeah. this because if we do this the right way, that's worth more than any amount of bread you could have put down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, my my last little quick closing thoughts on this is that like one of the fights truly gave me chills. So that's just how good I thought the choreography in the fightings yes. were. Um, yes. There was a few scenes that I definitely scratched my head because of some of the decisions that were made. And there's one I will, I will, uh, I you in and that's at, at just about the hour mark where there's like a decision of like, wait, um, <laughs> why would you? Okay. So you, you'll see what I'm, you'll see what happens. But right about at the hour mark, there's a decision that is made amongst the folks of the town that made me really scratch my head but I, i'll just leave it at that um but yeah like i said there was times where i felt like the fight scenes were really good there was some i thought that could have been better but i also think that could have been a, a, a testament to the editing yeah. uh, because i felt like the thing with with the donnie Yen uh part of this uh, of this uh franchise is that fights continuously got better and better and better chris and chris and more chris and then you finally got your resolve to the big boss battle but I like I said, it could be the editing, but like at times when I felt like there was issues in, in terms of the continuity of the fight, it felt a little stage. And, and 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 the times where it was more practical was when it was at its best. But sometimes it felt a little stage. And I'm strictly talking about um, I'm kind of eyeing in on the third act of this film. There's a particular fight on a set of stairways where. You're just oh like, oh my god, it just yes, it just didn't flow <laughs> as good as it could have been. Um, the blood splatter was not all that, it definitely didn't look too much like blood to me, but I just that's just nitpicking. And then the last thing I'll say is that the big boss battle, the fight that we're all waiting for between the head of the British clan and mm-hmm. Master Ip was underwhelming. This was like, in terms of just comparisons here. They had their best fight with Goro, and when they got the Shang Song, it was just like, that's it? <laughs> like, it, I felt like it could have been a lot more. For everything that he had to fight to get to that point, the mm-hmm. fights building up to the big boss battle, they were much better than the ultimate the battle. Last and, one. And, 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 and it could have been, you know, it may have been. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, sometimes it is like that, and it's okay. This one I didn't feel okay with. Okay. I felt like it, it should have been a bigger thing 
a big yeah. thing. So that's it could have, and I have to, and this is what I was saying before, um, you know, when we were off cam, I got to go back and review that last part again for that same reason. I think maybe it could, and I'll, I'll review again to confirm if, you know what I mean? But I think it could have been by the time the, the final boss fight, boss fight came around, he had had his awakening. So any fight post awakening, y'all not really going to be a challenge to me because whatever inhibitors I had, I got rid of now. Fair. So I'm fighting differently. You feel me? Because I agree with you that the fight on the train where they were trying to take the girl's purse, I was like, oh my, this what I'm, this what I'm about to do for the whole movie? Yeah. Locked in. Like, yeah. it was brilliant. And that's what yeah. I'm saying. Even me as a, like, because a lot of times I'll put myself in them situations. All right, do swung on me. How would I have handled that? Or if I was yeah. in that situation, how would it? And the stuff that they come up with, it's like, nah, I wouldn't have thought to do that. That's some, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Cheat code, okay. You got a cheat code. So yeah. I, 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 I definitely feel what you where you're coming from. Some of those early fights were amazing, um, but it could have been, and I, you know, I can't confirm, but I, it may have just been now that he's had that awakening, I, he's in that post state of mind. Yeah. Now when he fights, it's going to be like no, no challenge. Yeah, I can see what you're saying because uh, I will say that there was more combinations up until that last fight, and then the, and then. In the final fight, there was more of a three piece sequence, like boom, boom, yeah, stop, boom, boom, boom stop. So, yeah. so could could be, could be, and I, and again, this could be, you know, because of this being sort of another origin story. I think this right. could just be like another, you know, milestone of where he learned to become who he eventually who is going to be. And That's I think right. it's just like you know, patience, sort of different thing and whatnot. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. but. But folks, check this film out. Um, again, you can yeah. check it on the Hi app as of May twentieth, and will be on demand, digital and DVD, June twenty first. Uh, whatever way you want to watch it, I definitely think it's worth a a, a purchase. Um, yeah. because the the production and everything definitely deserves the best quality you can get, and typically Blu rays is where you're going to get that from. Um, yeah. but yeah, check 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 it out for sure. And then when you do, jump in the comments, let us know your thoughts, your 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 favorite fights, uh, some of some of your critiques and whatnot. Um, and maybe we'll see you around for another one of these films because God knows they're never ending. So, it is, and that's what I was gonna say. Of all of the offshoot films or <laughs> alternate timeline films, this might be the best one in terms of overall presentation. Like yeah. I said, I'm a fan of Grandmaster. That's just me. I'm a martial arts guy. I thought what they dis displayed. And Grandmaster was just, and it had uh, what's her name, Zing Zang, the girl from Crouching Tiger. Mm -hmm. Zhang Ziyi, I think she was in the jump. She had a couple of scenes, so it was like it was just it was fire. But that's yeah. but like I said, that's me. But if I'm looking at overall the 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 you know the movie elements, the all right, I got my popcorn and my entertainment for an hour, hour and some change. If I'm looking at it from that point of view, this arguably may have been the the, the best one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, folks, let us know. Let us know your rankings and all that other good stuff. Jump in the comments and do that, and we'll see you back around for more movie reviews very soon. Big old bell.